Well, good day, everybody, and welcome back. If you're a typewriter user and you like to share pictures of your typewritten pages online, then I'm sure you've had to deal with how can I make those pictures as good as possible to make the typewritten page as readable as possible? Well, if you're using a smartphone of some kind, I might have some tips for you here today how to improve the pictures you're taking of your typewritten pages. Stay tuned. Well, the first thing I would advise, step one, before you go anywhere else and do anything else, clean the lens or lenses on the back of your phone. The main rear-facing camera lens, clean those lenses with a soft cloth. You can use your shirt tail if it's cotton, soft clo cotton cloth, otherwise I could use a microfiber cloth. Okay, you clean the lens, you're going to get all the finger greases off it. That's step one. Well, this might be a typical lighting situation you might find yourself in. This is a single kind of a nightstand type of little lamp. It uses a single bulb. It's kind of more yellowish, more of a warmer color temperature. It's not really that bright. The lighting is coming from one side. It's not a real white light. This is often the kind of lighting situations you might find yourself under, especially if you find yourself typing at night where you don't have window light coming in from the daytime. And you have to find yourself photographing your typewritten page under this kind of poor lighting. Let's take a picture with my phone and see how bad does it really look? What are the problems photographing under this condition? Okay, I'm going to try to get this thing lined up here if I can, and take a shot. All right. Okay, here's the picture we just took, and the first thing you'll notice is that the left side of the picture is darker than the right side of the picture. This is the biggest problem with using a single light source, uneven lighting. Now, one of the things you should do before you go any further, especially if you're in uh, dim lighting, is zoom into the picture and look and make sure the letters look sharp. In this case, they do. But if your shutter speed was really low because your light was so dim, you could have blurry letters. Uh, or if you move the phone, if you're jerky or shaky when you, when you tap the shutter button, you could have unsharp letters. So the first thing is zoom in, make sure those letters are sharp enough to be easily read like they are. And then now we're going to have to deal with finding a better lighting setup because the lights are uneven. And also the third problem you might notice here is the left side of the picture is smaller than the right side. It's called keystoning. You notice the top and bottom edges of the picture aren't straight. They're a little slanted and there's a way to correct for that as well. But let's get some better lighting first. Well, the easiest thing to do about this lighting unevenness is just go get yourself another of your little table lamps that you might have around the house. This solution is nice because you don't have to buy anything. You're just using the existing lamps that you have around the house. Here's two different style lamps. They're both about the same height. There's probably two different types of light bulbs in these. So there will be a slight difference in color between one side and the other. But you can see now the lighting is pretty even. And if I was to hold my phone up here, the problem now we're starting to see is there's a shadow being cast by my phone and my presence next to the lights. I'm going to have to deal with that shadow next. Okay, so with my hand centered between the two lamps evenly, I'm getting my phone so that the picture is squared up on the screen, and I don't want it to be tilted this way or that way or that way or that way. I want the corners of the picture to be nice and square. That will prevent the so-called keystoning, but if you do have a little bit of keystoning, you can fix it. So I'm going to tap on the screen to make sure it's sharply focused. Make sure that I'm not too badly keystoned and then we'll take a picture. Well sometimes we don't have the luxury of being able to move the lights around as easily as I could these two little lights right here. So uh, in that regard I like to use a clipboard that has an angle adjustment where the clipboard can sit at various angles and that helps me to get good even illumination and different kinds of light. One of those different kinds of light is actually the lights I use on my video table. That's the common place that I take photos. They're hardware store lights. Let me show them to you. 
You know, there's a lot of expensive lighting that you can buy online to help photography and video work. Places like B&H Photo, even Amazon, and it can run up into a lot of money, but I really like the simple hardware store clamp lights. These cost less than $10 retail at my local hardware stores. You put a regular household light bulb in it. I'm using some LED light bulbs that are daylight balanced, so they're wider than a incandescent bulb would be. And then I diffuse them with the high-tech white printer paper clamped on the edge with bulldog clips. Yes, that's right. This total light cost is probably less than $10. My video table has four of them here and here, but I think for your purposes, if you want to spend about $20 to $25, buy two of these, buy a couple light bulbs, and then you can uh, go ahead and clamp these to a convenient table where you like to do photographing of your typewritten documents. They don't have to stay there. It's just a temporary setup. You illuminate the paper from both directions, about a 45 degree angle. You can get down on top of them and you can photograph it straight down. Or in my case, because my lights are coming from kind of the four corners, I have a different solution. I have an old clipboard that has an adjustable foot on the back, a rest or support, and I can support the clipboard at various angles. So I will typically clamp the typewritten document by one of its corners so the clamp it doesn't get in the picture, and then I will set it up something like this, and then I'll go around to the front side where you guys are at, and I'll take a picture of this, and it's angled so that the lighting is really even like that, and a little thing like that works really well. They don't really make these clipboards anymore, but you can do the same thing with just a stack of books and just a, a clipboard or something like that to hold the paper flat. And speaking of holding the paper flat, what you don't want to do <laughs> is hold it in your hand like that. You see how it's curved? You hold it in your hand like that and you're going to take a picture of it. Here, let's, uh, let's do that, shall we? Let's just take a picture of that and let's see how bad that could actually be. Oh, that's not good. Okay, well that's a really terrible picture. You see how it's curved there on the side? So even if we tried to edit this and tried to crop it in, um, you know, well, it looks like first of all we might have to do some keystone adjustments, right? Well, maybe rotation now. Let's go back up to the crop tool, rotate it. Maybe we can get the line straighter and we'll have to zoom out a little bit. And then we can, um, uh, it looks pretty bad. So there's, what's going on here is kind of like a pin cushioning effect on the sides. The picture is kind of shrunk in in the middle. And there's no easy way to compensate for this because the paper wasn't held flat. And that's one of the other important keys. Hold the paper flat. So this, uh, problem with the sides of the typewritten page being curved, it can happen with smartphone lenses. Oftentimes they're not perfectly rectilinear. There's a little bit of pincushion distortion. So the basic photos app in the iOS and the iPhone doesn't correct for that, but there are other photo apps that you can use that will actually expand out or shrink in so you get those vertical lines straight. Uh, the other option though you can do here is if you want to go a little bit more fancy, if you happen to have a digital camera, you want to use that instead of your phone, you could. I have actually found though the phones are really convenient and work pretty good, but with a digital camera, you're going to have to pick a lens that is relatively rectilinear. Not all digital camera lenses uh, are that way. Some of them do have pincushion distortion also. And then you're going to have to transfer the footage. If you're wanting to edit the picture in your phone and then share it uh, to social media from your phone, you'll have to transfer the picture to your phone. Some uh, modern digital cameras have dedicated apps that allow you to transfer that way a protocol. Uh, I like to use a hardwired um, dongle, a card reader dongle that plugs into my phone and I just pop the memory card out of my camera and pop it in there. It's faster and it doesn't use up as much battery life on your phone, like doing Bluetooth or whatever, especially if you're out remotely away from a power source. 
Anyway, transfer the footage to your phone and then you can edit it in whatever app you use. Digital cameras are good for that and I've done some of it over the years, but ultimately I end up always reverting back to using my phone itself uh, because even though the this is an older iPhone, a 6S, it only has a single lens, a single camera, a lot of the newer phones, both um, Android and, and Apple, have multiple lenses or multiple cameras and you can probably choose the slightly more telephoto uh, focal length and get a little bit a picture a little bit less distorted in terms of fish pin cushion or fish eye kind of distortion okay here is the picture that i took and i'm going to show you how i edit this in the photos app on the iphone so this is the raw photo you can see it sideways. I'm going to hit the edit button in the upper right corner. I'm going to select the uh, cropping tool on the right side and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now I'm going to drag the borders of the cropping tool in and get rid of the edges of the paper on top, bottom, left and right. And also, if there's any keystoning adjustments that need to be made, I can do those now. Those are done either with this keystone tool here or this keystone tool here, and you would simply adjust them accordingly to kind of straighten up the image either this way or that way, or sometimes both ways. And also, when you're in the main cropping tool here, you can rotate it. There's a rotation effect. So between the rotate and the other cropping tools, you should be able to get it pretty well squared away. Now you notice I have a little bit of black on the top. I know I need to get rid of that. Okay, before I say this is good, actually I'm going to crop a little bit off the right. Before I say this is good, now there is this round tool with dots around it in the upper right corner. I'm going to click on that. That's going to enable me to adjust the picture quality and one of the first things I like to do is this yin-yang symbol called brilliance and if you increase the brilliance you notice how any illumination differences between the top and bottom of the picture are kind of straightened out like here's the original that's actually exaggerated you see that one side's a little darker than the other if I increase the brilliance to a point the illumination is much more even but doing that it kind of darkens it also so I'm gonna go right above the brilliance tool is this plus minus tool which is the exposure adjustment I'm gonna raise this by a couple notches uh, on the scale here like that and then you can zoom in and you can kind of look and see how it looks pretty even that's pretty much all I do for adjusting the pictures once I photographed it properly so here I'm gonna say done on the upper right corner and there is my picture. One thing I really like uh, when I do photograph my typewritten pages is I want to be able to see a little bit of the paper itself. In other words, I don't want the white background to be pure white. I want to be able to see the paper slightly. So that's why there's a faint light gray tone to the background here because I know it's typewritten and it's on paper. I want to see that. That's my own personal look that I like. So now, you might want to make sure that the paper, especially if you're shooting on white paper, make sure the paper looks white in the photo. Now, most good smartphone cameras will automatically white balance the picture as you go, but there are typically white balance adjustments you can do if it isn't white. My phone seems to work pretty well, but if you're using a dedicated digital camera, you might want to white balance it on the white paper. Just turn it over and do the manual white balance on the back side. That way you make sure that the white paper really is white, especially if you're shooting under those dim desk lamp, kind of like with incandescent light bulbs where every Everything looks kind of yellowish and orangish. Make sure you white balance it first. And of course, when you're editing the picture on the phone afterwards, you can also control the tint of the picture if you need to do some slight adjustments there. But also, some people like to type on paper other than white, in which case you want to make sure adjusting the white balance or the tint that the paper looks as faithful as it can in real life, if that's your aim. Well, let's review, shall we? If you're using a smartphone to photograph your typewritten pages, first of all, clean the lenses. Secondly, get some good even lighting. 
at least a couple lights pointing to your typewritten sheet from either direction, preferably the more white, like daylight balanced LED light bulbs. Most people these days are going away from incandescent bulbs anyway, so you probably already have those kind of light bulbs in your house. Thirdly, make sure you're not casting shadows on your paper from either your body or your phone. And so you want to get the right angle. You might have to use an angled clipboard or some kind of a board to get the lighting even. And if you need to, adjust the color temperature or the white balance on your camera so the paper looks to be the normal color it should be. And then you're going to have to do a little cropping and straightening and adjusting of the uh, tones afterwards in the camera, in your phone, to get a really good picture, to it looks really good, and then you can share it online. Now, I know this tutorial was sort of based on an older iPhone, but the smartphone market these days is so competitive that regardless of whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone of some flavor, they should give you the ability to do all of these adjustments in the camera. The phones are very good these days for having photo-centric apps. You'll just have to learn the basics of how to straighten your pictures, tilt them, straighten out the keystoning, and then get the tones evened out and nice and crisp so everything looks normal. Well, I hope this gave you some ideas on how better to use your smartphone to take pictures of your typewritten pages, to make them neater and more legible. It sure has given me a lot of better images just to follow these few simple principles, and I hope they help you. Well, as always, this is for the purpose of, of course, expanding our creativity, and part of that is sharing what we've done with others. And so I wish you the very best. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.